Okay, so here's the second lesson for um, section 6.1, the equation of line and slope y-intercept form. So in the last lesson for this chapter, um, I gave you the graph of a line, and you were able to then write the equation um, in slope y-intercept form. For this lesson, what you're going to be able to do, I'm going to give you the equation in the form y equals mx plus b, and you are going to then be able to graph the line. Okay, Remember the equation y equals mx plus b, remember that m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. That's why we call this slope y-intercept form. Okay, so let's start off with example one. If I give you the equation y equals two-thirds x plus one, and I want to graph this, we know that this has a slope of two-thirds, because two-thirds is in the place of m, so our m value is two-thirds, that's our slope, and the y-intercept, our b value, is equal to one. Now, in order to graph this line, um, what you have to do, step number one is to plot your y-intercepts. My y-intercept is one, that means it crosses the y-axis at one. So I'm going to plot that point right there, it crosses the y-axis at one. So I've plotted my y-intercept. The next step is to use your slope to plot more points on the line. So my slope is two-thirds. So I remember slope, remember slope is rise over run. That means um, my rise Okay, is 2, and my run is 3. So I'm going to use my rise and my run to plot another point on the line. So I'm going to do that now. to get. So I'm going to start at my y-intercept, and I'm going to use my rise of 2 and my run of 3 to plot another point. So I have to go up 2, 1, 2, right 3, 1, 2, 3. And there's another point on my line. And I can keep plotting more points if I kept using that slope of 2 over 3. So from now my new point, go up 2, right 3 again. And that'll give me another point on my line, and I can keep going, and I can keep getting more points. But you notice all of these points are to the right of my y-intercept. What if I want to find points to the left of my y-intercept that are on this line? Because I know this line will continue forever in both directions. Well, if I want points to the other side, I have to use the opposite slope, okay? So, um, to plot points on the other side of the y-intercept. So the opposite of 2 over 3 is negative 2 over negative 3. And keep in mind, 2 divided by 3 has the exact same value as negative 2 over negative 3. Okay? 2 divided by 3 is positive 0 0.6 repeated, um, and negative 2 divided by negative 3 has the exact same value of 0 0.6666666, so on. Okay? So these have the exact same value, um, so I, that's why I'm allowed to use both of them. So a slope of negative 2 over negative 3 has a rise of negative 2, and a run of negative 3. Now I know a rise of negative 2 means I go down 2 from my, so I'll start my y-intercept again, I'll go down 2 this time and then a run of negative 3 means go left 3, go left 3, 1, 2, 3 and there's my new point. Okay. So with a slope of 2 over 3 I went up to right 3 to find points to the right. If I want to find points to the other side, <clears throat> do the opposite. Instead of going <coughs> instead of going up to right 3, go down to left 3. So down 2 again, left 3 again. There's another point. Then from this point, go down 2 again, go left 3 again. And there's another point. And the reason why I'm allowed to do this is, remember, because 2 over 3 is equivalent to negative 2 over negative 3. So you can use both of those slopes to find points on both sides of the y-intercept. Connect all of these points. And they should form a straight line if you've done it properly. And there we go, that's what the graph of this line looks like. Let's do another one. Let's graph the line y equals negative 3x, whoops, y equals negative 3x minus 5. So my slope, um, remember the equation of the line is y equals mx plus b, so the m value is in front of the x, so my m value is negative 3. And if you don't see it written as a fraction, think of it as negative 3 over 1. But we just write it as negative 3, because negative 3 divided by 1 equals negative 3. But for the sake of being able to easily tell what your rise and your run are, I'm going to write it as a fraction, as negative 3 over 1. So negative 3 is my rise, my run is 1. Okay. And now looking at the equation, my y-intercept is negative 5, so my b value is negative 5. Step number 1 when graphing is to plot your y-intercept, so it crosses the y-axis at negative 5, and then from here use your slope to plot more points on this line. So um, 
I'm going to first plot points to the right by using my slope of negative 3 over 1. So rise negative 3, that mean go, means go down 3 from my y-intercept. 1, 2, 3, and then go right 1. A run of 1 means to go to, run of positive 1 means to go to the right 1. And there's another point. Now if I want to find um, points to the other side of my y-intercept, I have to use the opposite slope. Okay, So the opposite of negative 3 over 1, so going down 3, right 1, would be going up 3, left 1. So up three. start from your y-intercept again, go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and left 1. Okay, And then continue doing that. Um, so from that new point, go up 3, 1, 2, 3, left 1, up 3 again, 1, 2, 3, left 1. And then you can keep doing this until you've maxed out the area on your graph. And then connect those with a straight line, they should form a straight line. And that's what the graph of y equals negative 3x minus 5 looks like. So once again, why am I, so my slope was negative 3 over 1. I used that rise and run to find points to the right of my y-intercept. If I want to find points to the other side, use the opposite slope. So just change the integer value of your rise and your run. It becomes 3 over negative 1. And these have equivalent values. Negative 3 divided by 1 is equal to negative 3 and 3 divided by 1 is also equal to negative 3. That's why I'm allowed to use both of the slopes. One slope is going to find points to one side of the y-intercept, the other slope is going to find points to the other side of the y-intercept. Okay, now we're going to do some more work with um, horizontal and vertical lines just to make sure you have this down. We did a bit, bit with this last section of this chapter, or last part of this section, and we'll do some more of this section. So plot the points A and B to start with. So point A is negative 5, 3, and I know a coordinate um, is in the form x, y. So point A is at negative 5, 3, so negative 5 on the x-axis, 3 on the y-axis, and there's my point right there. That's my point A. Point B, it says, is 8, 3, so 8 on the x-axis, 3 on the y-axis, and there's point B. I want to connect these with a straight line and you'll notice this is a perfectly horizontal line. Um, what does part B ask me to do? It asks me what is the y-intercept for the line that passes through A and B? Well the y-intercept, where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses the y-axis right there um, at 3 on the y-axis. So my B value is equal to 3. What is the slope for the line that passes through A and B? Um, I know the slope of all horizontal lines um, is going to be zero. Why? I have to do rise divided by run. The rise, um, to get to any two points on a horizontal line, um, to get from A to B, I don't have to go up or down at all, so my rise is going to be zero. And then it's kind of irrelevant what my run is going to be, because zero divided by anything is always going to be zero. But for this case, to get from A to B, I have to go to the right, I have to go 13 units to the right, 0 divided by 13 is going to be 0. So all horizontal lines have a slope of 0. What is the equation for a line that passes through A and B? Well, hopefully you remember from last lesson, um, the equation of any horizontal line is going to always be y equals b. So whatever y equals whatever the y-intercept is. Um, so it's going to be y equals, the y-intercept was 3, so y equals 3. If you didn't remember that, I'll just get rid of this for a second. If you didn't remember that from the last lesson, um, try and write the equation in the form y equals mx plus b. Plug in your slope and your y-intercept. So my slope was 0, and my y-intercept was 3. So I plug that in, and I have y equals 0 times x plus 3. What's 0 times x? 0 times x is just 0. So that's gone. All I'm left with is 3. So that's the equation of that line, y equals 3. So a little note here, the equation of a horizontal line is always in the form y equals b, where b is your y-intercept, okay? And another way to think about this, I said this last lesson as well, um, why is this the equation of a horizontal line? Well, think about it. What are the coordinates of every point on this line? The coordinates of, um, of this point right here on the line um, is 6, 3. What's the coordinate of, let's say, this point on the line? This is at point 2, 3. What are the coordinates of this point on the line? It's at negative 3, 3. Notice how every single y-coordinate of all of the points on this line is 3. 
okay? Hence the equation of the line, y equals 3, okay? Now let's do a vertical line. So let's plot the points a, 5, 8, so 5 on the x-axis, 8 on the y-axis, so there's point a, and point b is at 5, negative 3. 5 on the x-axis, negative 3 on the y-axis, and there's point b. Let's connect these with a straight line, and you'll notice that this line is perfectly vertical. So, part A, um, I plot the points. Part B, what is the y-intercept for this line? Where does this line cross the y-axis? Here's my y-axis. Where does the line cross the y-axis? It never does because they're parallel to each other. So where's the y-intercept? Um, there is none. What is the slope of the line that passes through A and B? Well, hopefully you remember from last, um, last section, the slope of all vertical lines is undefined. And just a reminder of why that is, remember slope equals rise over run. And remember, um, so rise is the vertical distance between the two points. So I have a vertical distance of 11 um, between the two points. So to get from A to B, I have to go down 11. So my rise is negative 11. And my run, how far do I have to go left or right to get from A to B? Well, it doesn't go left or right at all because it's perfectly vertical. So my run, the horizontal distance between the two points, is 0. And remember, you can't divide a number by zero. Therefore, we say that the slope is undefined. And the horizontal between um, two points on any vertical line is always going to be zero. Okay? Therefore, um, if your run is always going to be equal to zero, you're always going to be trying to divide by zero, and we know we can't do that. Therefore, we say all vertical lines have an undefined slope. Okay? So what is the slope for a line that passes through A to A, B? Our slope is undefined. Now, I want to write the equation. Um, oh, I want to delete. I want to delete. I want to delete this stuff to make some room. I'll just erase it. Mm. Sorry, this is taking a little while. Almost done. All right, this is good enough. Okay. If I now want to um, write the equation of this line, so what is the equation for the line that passes through A and B? Um, oh, sorry, I wrote the slope under that part there. I already wrote the slope is undefined up here. If I want to write the equation for the line that passes through A and B, um, note the equation of all vertical lines is always x equals A, where A, so x equals A, where A is the x-intercept, okay? So where does this line cross the x-axis? It crosses the x-axis at 5, so x equals 5. So all vertical lines have an equation x equals a, where a is the x-intercept. So the equation of this line is x equals 5. Another way to think about this, what's the x-coordinate of all points on this line? Well, this point right here is at 5, 6. This point right here is at 5, 3. This point down here is at 5, negative 7. Notice that the x-coordinate of all the points that make up this line is 5, therefore the equation is x equals 5. Okay, And just to consolidate everything that we've done here, um, in general, a horizontal line, so a horizontal line has, an, has a slope that is 0, and an equation of the form y equals b, where b is the y-intercept. In general, a vertical line, however, has a slope that is undefined and an equation of the form x equals a, where a is the x-intercept. Um, also, what we did today, what are the steps required to graph a line using the slope and the y-intercept? Um, first thing you want to do is you want to plot the y-intercept. Plot the y-intercept. After you've plotted the y-intercept, Use the slope, um, so use slope to plot points on either side of the y-intercept. So use the slope to plot points on both sides of the y-intercept. Then, after you've done that, connect the points with a straight line. Connect points with straight line. And that's everything that we did today. So 
Make sure you remember, um, important thing from today, you need to be able to graph a line using your slope and y-intercept, but also um, make sure you have a good understanding of the difference between a horizontal and a vertical line. So a horizontal line is always going to have a rise of zero, therefore it's always going to be zero divided by the run, which is always going to be zero, so your slope is always going to be zero for a horizontal line. And we write the equation as y equals b, where b is the y-intercept. For a vertical line, a vertical line is always going to have a run of zero because there's no horizontal distance between two points on a vertical line. So you're always going to be doing rise divided by zero, and you can't divide by zero, therefore the slope is going to be undefined. And an equation, the equation of all vertical lines is going to be in the form x equals a, where a is your x-intercept. Um, make sure now you um, download the worksheet from jensenmath.ca, um, and let me know if you have any questions.